Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrott, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. In brightest day. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, Master of the Core. He was I am Will. Be, hey, everyone. He was in Blackest Night over there. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. <laughs> That's right. And today, kids, we'll be talking some uh, Justice League. Justice League, a midsummer, a midsummer's nightmare. So I'm going to be getting Green Lantern, but uh, some Superman, some Wonder Woman, some Flash, and uh, hold on to your hats, kids. We're going to get some Batman. <laughs> Batman. Wait, who? My favorite who? character. Oh, Batman. <laughs> My favorite character. Nice. Oh, please. Ray is bulletproof right now. As, as the, <laughs> the night we're recording this, it, it, we are hours away from the premiere of Moon Knight. So. That is true. That is oh, very did you true. See, did you see? I don't know how he wrangled that, but I guess they got like uh, the first four episodes ahead of time to review. I, I I was look I was noticing that uh, Into the Night was posting some things mm -hmm. about hey you guys can't you know I'm like that's awesome that he got to see it before everybody else so that's yeah cool. so yeah uh, him and two of his co-hosts yeah they're because first he's I guess he's putting out like episodes that were non spoilery but then once an episode drops they'll spoil it but yeah no so I mean he's he's still super charged about it so well and yeah. who blames him I mean yeah he's his favorite it. character it's Big well, his, time. His second, <laughs> his second favorite character. Oh, my right. favorite character. <laughs> well, I'm nice. excited too, and you know, especially if we you know gets the Ray seal of approval. Although he's, not, I don't know, he likes everything. So, but yeah. no, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it's gonna be good. But yeah, it looks, uh, and yeah, from what I've seen, it looks looks really good. Uh, mm -hmm. I have heard another Marvel ish property. <laughs> Uh, perhaps wasn't so good, but I haven't seen it, so I can't speak to that. But Sony, oh Morbius, yeah, it comes yeah. out Friday. <laughs> I'll let you know because I'll see. I'll see it this weekend. All okay. right, awesome. Hey, I found out some information. It looks like it dropped. Um, I think uh, earlier, maybe late last week or early this week. Um, Oh, about an upcoming Green Lantern something? March 29th. No, it looks like, yeah, it looks like it dropped today. So, uh, Oh, well, I'll get it tomorrow then. Uh, the DC is doing the 2022 DC Round Robin Tournament. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, is there a Green Lantern book in there? I... Uh, it looks like there's Green Lantern, The Light at the End of Forever. Oh. Uh, which is a dark, uh, dark far future, a galaxy gripped by tyranny when an elderly farmer in a backwater system is brutalized by the latest thugs with jetpacks and jack boots. To call themselves lawmen, he remembers a forgotten past, an era of champions, a cadre of noble peacekeepers long since vanished. His name, he's sure of it, is John Stewart. Whatever happened to the Green Lantern Corps? Is it too late to reignite the light? So that's the oh, that's that series. I assume these are limited series. Um, yeah, because like I, last year's winner uh, was the Robins miniseries. That was like a six issue miniseries, ah, which cool. yeah, I'm still waiting for the last one of that. But yeah, so uh, then we've got Green Lantern: The Birth of Conspiracy. Uh, the logline for it is: In 1947, three events kindled America's fascination with UFOs: the Men in Black, flying saucer sightings, and the Roswell crash. Three low level government employees tasked with monitoring superheroes realized that one person was at all three events. The Green Lantern, Alan Scott. He hasn't been seen since. Ooh. So it looks like uh, in the Green Lantern is going up against Captain Carrot and Darkseid. What? 
<laughs> yeah, Captain Carrot and something dark side. I can, I can just barely see the. Hang on, let me see. Yeah, here we go. I still can't see the complete logo. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm 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 on the page now. Yeah, Captain Carrot and his best friend Dark Side. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Green Lantern, the light at the end of forever. Let's see, the end of forever. Yeah, that's going up against Black Canary when canaries cry. Yeah, I mean, again, it's going to brackets down until they get down to one. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, I don't know what this means for a Green Lantern ongoing because it still doesn't look like we have a Green Lantern ongoing at this point since yeah. twelve seems to be the last issue of the current volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking to see what. Uh... Other books are here. Uh, oh, we got Goo Kid Flash, The Speed of Fear. <laughs> oh, Lord. Kid Flash, The Speed of Fear. All right, let me read the synopsis. Reverse Flash melds with Parallax oh my God. in an unprecedented combination of the Speed Force and the fear based yellow power ring to create a deadly speed ring to shatter Oa Central Green Light. Oh, we're going to bust that battery again. <laughs> Oh my god. We didn't even rebuild it. We didn't even we haven't even rebuilt it yet. We're already breaking it again. A confused and isolated kid flash must chase Thawne across a very a variety of alien worlds to stop him and the Sinestro Corps when his own powers die because of Kid Flash's slow disconnection with the speed force. Interesting. So even if we don't get a Green Lantern book, we might get some Sinestro Corps in a Kid Flash book. Yeah. Uh I see Firestorm, Fourth World Problems. Yep, yep. Uh, I, I see what you're here, DC. Uh, Justice League Redacted. Yeah, there's a, there's a, yeah. <laughs> redacted, Justice, Redacted, Redacted, Redacted League, Redacted, Redacted. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, uh, Suicide Squad Dark. Uh, what? <laughs> thought they were already uh, pretty dark. Yeah, because... <laughs> A team of occult misfits and monsters assembled by Amanda Waller and led by Vampire Batman oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> are forced into a mind-melting suicide mission to assassinate Earth-13's League of Shadows. Okay. Constantine and the Demon Vacation from Hell. <laughs> the Question's Grand Solution. Wildcat, Nine Lives. Hawkman and Hawkwoman, the Changeling. Uh, we did Black Canary when Canaries Cry, or Green, you know, Green Lantern Ghost Tour from Hell, Animal Man, The Metamorphosis, uh, Captain Carrot and his best friend Dark Side. I just that sounds so insane. Superboy, no. the, the Man of Tomorrow, and Cyber Cyborg Cyber God. So looks like there's 16 titles there. Yeah, like I said, they'll wonder how quickly they bracket those down. Uh, yeah, kids. I don't know how long they're gonna be doing this, but yeah, go vote. Go vote for go some vote. Green Lantern. Yeah, and maybe we'll get a Green Lantern ongoing again. I, maybe they have a big, maybe they have a big push in Dark Crisis, and they're gonna get a book spinning out of that. I mean, I I don't know. That's just okay. a guess. Oh, uh, you know what? We'll we'll be we'll pass round one by the time you hear this, kids. But it looks like each round is a week, so. Hmm. So you vote, and then the series, the series that the series that wins just gets made. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. They'll make it. Yeah, because like I said, that Robin's mini series was the one who won last year. Now that was a six issue series. So, ah, okay, huh? You know, be funny. The two Green Lantern books went up, were the final two, and they had to go up against each other. They can't because they're on the same side of mm. the bracket. <laughs> Probably did that on purpose. Probably. Um, so interesting. I they don't even do they even they don't even have teams for these then, do they? Um I'm not seeing a team announced. I want uh, I wonder if they have teams in mind or if they're or if they're waiting till the, something wins to pick the team, or if they're just waiting to announce hmm. the team. I don't know. Because you know what you know why I wonder. I wonder if there were like you know people might vote for a book they wouldn't ordinarily vote for if they knew who the team was. Maybe 
I guess. I mean, I don't know. That's it's weird. I know. I didn't know. I didn't know they did this last year. I was out of the loop. So wild. All right. Well, um, but of course, Vampire, Vampire Batman had the show up in one book. <sighs> Batman. We need more, we need more oh, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have more Batman. Yeah, come on. Must have more Batman. Got to keep up with that Moon Knight guy. Come on. <laughs> oh, I finally finished Discovery. Ah, pretty good season, I thought. Yeah, um, I was saying, I was like, I was like, is this the final season? Because just the way they ended it, that could have been like a series finale. But I believe they said they're making another season. Well, probably not going to see it until twenty twenty three. Yeah, I would guess. And then, uh, yeah, I thought this season was. A stronger than the third season my still my favorite season is season two i mean it just had so much going on pike the enterprise yeah oh yeah that, what, is that, what is that may i think we're getting strange new worlds yep that's coming soon very cool and then um picard's going on right now Picard's going on right now which is is interesting mm -hmm. it seems to really kind of be a slow burn i'm I'm curious to where they're going. So they still got me. <laughs> yeah. Did you, so you watched last week's. Yep. So so you missed it. You say so you got you caught the. That's yeah. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stuff is weird. Stuff is mm -hmm. weird. <laughs> oh yeah, I can't wait to see where that goes. But oh yeah, I'm racing home tomorrow to see. You know, I'm gonna grab comics on my way home and race home and watch Moon. <laughs> Well, speaking of what's uh, what are you getting tomorrow? Have you already got your list? I have my list. Let me check it twice. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, oh, the last part of uh, Spider-Man Beyond. We see we see what they do to poor Ben Riley. Uh, <laughs> oh, look, Batman Beyond the White Knight number one comes out. Batman One Dark Knight number two comes out. Uh, oh, your favorite DC vs. Vampires number six. Man, they turned Hal into a vampire and Zatanna. Well, I mean, they basically turned everyone except for like Batman and his Batman crew. Batman and Green, Green Arrow. Arrow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ba -ba. Oh, Shadow War Alpha. Yes. Deathstroke or someone who wants you to think it's Deathstroke kill, is supposedly killing Ra's al Ghul. So. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> so there's a big crossover between Batman, Deathstroke, and Robin because, you know. Someone killed Robin's grandfather. You think James can <laughs> have uh, issues with that? Grandpa. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, I don't know if you've heard of this book. Um, Radiant Black. It's an image comics book by Cal Higgins. Have you ever read that? I haven't read it. I've heard good things about it, but I don't know really what it's about. What, yeah, we what talked is... to Cal Higgins when it started. I mean, it's basically this weird alien thing comes and gives this guy powers, and then it he... I, I don't want to give away too much, but then later on we see like other people have gotten these things and there's like different color, uh, no oh. radiance and stuff. And yeah, they, he, they haven't revealed everything yet, but it must be something alien going on or behind the scenes. It might even be a whole war thing, but huh? No, it's, okay. it's good. And the art is like really good. I'll have to, I'll put that down on the list. Yeah. Cause number 13 comes out tomorrow. So well, yeah, tomorrow. Oh, I know what you'll be waiting for. Uh, Silver Surfer Rebirth number three comes out tomorrow. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's That's been fun. Oh, yeah. And the final part for War for Earth 3 number number two comes out. So, yeah, that's the, fi that's the final issue, that crossover. Which I don't think we have a lantern in it, but except for, like, we'll have, like, Earth 3's, you know, evil version, which is uh, like oh. John, the John Stewart version. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Oh, I was uh, I, I'm strange. You probably have figured that out by now. Uh, but I tend to get hyper focused on things. My kids think I have ADD, but whatever. I of course love Hal Jordan, and I of course love Hal Jordan. Um, but I was uh, that giant reading order on Reddit that uh, is out there. I basically threw all that into a text editor and made a checklist. From it, so it has all the titles with the numbers and everything. I'll have to post it out there, and I'll send you a copy too. Oh yeah, send it, send it to me. Yeah, oh yeah. It it was uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so I've been working on that, and so how far is that? Is that is that the current is that the current day or? Uh... 
up to current ago. day. Yeah, it goes from oh. Silver Age to current. <laughs> <laughs> it's in alphabetical order except for like the annuals i made sure to keep them with the series you know like the next entry was the annual for that series and even though the green lantern i, I put it up with green lantern you know after green lantern volume five but before green lantern volume six so it's not yeah. perfectly but i tried to keep some of those series together uh, but i will make you i will make you a deal this was I'm sure we're probably years out from this, but if we catch up the current continuity and we're like, wait a minute, how are we going to do another weekly show since we're caught up? We'll go back and do the Silver Age Hal Jordan. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be very cool. Oh, and uh, I think Grant Morrison on his Substack was uh, had some comments on his uh, the Green Lantern run. Mm. Uh, a little bit and i think it's continued so he's gonna next time he posts he may be posted on that which is kind of cool to see com some of the uh inside baseball type stuff because i mean it's freaking grant morrison right i mean yes <laughs> i was gonna say oh, and i don't know can you mm. see behind me yes right there I don't know. What do you get? Oh, that's, do I see a Funko box or? Yes, you do. John oh. Stewart. Oh, nice. <laughs> Not the. Uh... Yeah, I can't see which. Is it a newer one? Is it classic nah, it's, look? It's a classic look. Oh, nice. Oh, with the mask and everything. Nice. Yeah. Whoops. There we go. Nice. Oh, hang on. I've not got my light turned on. Duh. That's why everything looks so dark. Ah. <laughs> there we go that's better nice. all right yeah uh now i just need to you know and i saw that they're releasing a black canary from deceased oh uh funko for that one i think oh. tom king posted that last week um there's a john's and then it looks like the like there's a wonder woman as Sinestro core for some strange reason. Hmm. I've seen a few different of the cores. Huh. But uh, the one, of course, that I do not have is Hal Jordan, of course. Yeah, because those are expensive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Should have got it when it came out, but whatever. I know. I looked and I was like, man. <laughs> I'm going to have to get lucky on that one and find Once it again, cheap on eBay or something. <laughs> yeah. Unless they put out a new one or something. But yeah, it's like. How Jordan's expensive. <laughs> Kids, now all those Moon Knight Funkos are expensive as hell because TV show, I guess. That's what? Kind of there's a, there's a TV show? Hey, someone we know might be interested in that. That's right. Ray, put down those Batman comics. There's a Moon Knight show. Yeah. Into the Dark Knight, all to do with Batman. <laughs> uh, uh, Ray, go sit down and watch Moon Knight. Sounds like a plan, Jan. <laughs> Although man, he don't have to watch anything for the first four weeks for the first month because, like I, I said, you have copies of the first four episodes. That's right, <laughs> which is pretty darn awesome. I know. <laughs> said I'm jealous, mm. but couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Yes. I'm, I'm once they once they announce that green, you know, when that Green Lantern show is coming, man, we got to be up there, but twenty four seven and be like, man. So when that finally drops, we can like, man, can you give some episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I found. Um, Another, I haven't watched it yet, but uh, the uh, podcast of Oa looks like it's oh, a really? good show. Uh, they have the blog of Oa too, which uh, oh. is is uh, where they list like the upcoming Green Lantern titles every new you know month as it comes out and stuff like that. So shout out to those guys. They're it looks like a pretty cool podcast. Cool. I'll have to um, check it out. Then I'll send you a link. But uh, someone did a kind of an overview of why the Green Lantern animated series was like the best cartoon of its time <laughs> and i was there for it completely there for it <laughs> nice because it was awesome very awesome oh, fact, it, made, it, it made me want to watch it again <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that's another thing we'll have to throw in somewhere just some that green lantern animated series episodes and stuff yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's that what could have been if the movie would not have bombed, unfortunately. 
I mean, I don't think the script was the best, and they tried to throw so much into that movie. I mean, you tried to do Hector Hammond and Parallax. You know, how's how defeats Parallax his first couple days on the job? Okay. Yeah, that you know, I think it was you know, it's the problem with most of the DC uh cinematic universe is they, they wanted, wanted to get up to Avengers Endgame. Yeah, from the get go, and they did. They didn't build for you know. They didn't yeah. want to take the time, and you know, how's the first movie should have been, you know, if Secret Origin, you know, from the from yeah. after Rebirth. Yeah, you know, maybe it's... pepper some stuff in there, uh, you know, to come. But then Parallax could have maybe been the second one, and then Blackest Night. Or I mean, there's so much good stuff, yeah. you know, that you can adapt. Tease it out, man. Parallax doesn't take him over until the second or third movie, man. You get uh, your modern day Superman 3, man. He's flicking peanuts in the bar. Yeah. <laughs> Rapping. Uh, uh, I'm sure I'll get in trouble for this, but Man of Steel just left me cold. <laughs> Very oh, cold. you're not the only one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Everything. I, you know, uh, I, I'm glad people enjoy the the Snyderverse stuff. It's definitely not for me. Not uh, for me either. Neither. Yeah. I know Lil feels the same way, which next week Lil Hellfire will be here. Uh, Perfect. But no, like she said, she goes, you know, it's a failure when Batman, you had a movie with Batman versus Superman and it didn't make a billion dollars. Yeah. I mean, Batman and Superman and it didn't make a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. Spider Man did that by, well, all the Spider Mans did that. <laughs> it took three of them, but you know they did it. <laughs> but yeah, Batman and Superman. It's really. So yeah, I. You know, it's been that was that was so. The boys were fifteen when. Green Lantern came out. So it was me and them went to the movies. We're like, this is going to be awesome. Eh, it wasn't. The next year they turned 16 on their birthday. John Carter came out and we, we are huge John Carter of Mars fans. We were like, this is, the, and it's on their birthday is when it's actually coming out. It's their 16th birthday. This is going to be. And again, <laughs> it wasn't awesome. <laughs> again, it seems like I keep repeating myself on all, you know all these shows but it's this it's the formula is simple it's like stick to the source material as much as you can and don't rush it again people whether you hate love or hate disney i mean they put in the time they they came up with a plan they stuck to the plan no matter what uh speed bumps came in their way <laughs> thor dark world and uh you know <laughs> it's course yeah i mean it's you know, these, you know, Warner's hits a speed bump. They're like, oh, we got to change it. We got to change everything. Blah, blah, blah. You know, you know, like I said, DC now, hit me, Thor the Dark World. They're like, no, let's keep going. Well, let's keep going. Yeah. I, I heard, I've heard really good things about the Batman. Yeah, it's good. That's what I said. It's, it's one of the, I think it's the best Batman we've gotten since at least, you know, the Dark Knight with Heath Ledger. Cool. That's, uh, that's one I'm kind of looking forward to. Yeah, it, I mean it's coming. It'll be on HBO Max. I think was it the April nineteenth or something, something like that. Yeah. So, it, cool. Yeah, Very a little cool. under a month. So, yeah, you mm -hmm. won't have to go to the theater or nothing, anything. Yeah, that's what Ray said. He'll watch it when it hits TV. So, hey, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I did see something about DC Infinite now being available to international people. I believe because uh, it said the 29th. So, uh -huh. I texted Ray or I messaged Ray last night. And I said. I said, do you have it yet? Because they said the 29th because it was already the 29th down there. So I'm like, I don't know if they mean your 29th or our 29th. <laughs> he, it, was, it, was, it was before midnight our time. So he was like, he's like, no, not yet. And I'm like, well, oh, it was like 1030 at night. I was like, well, check it in like another hour and a half because then it'll be the 29th there. <laughs> nice. Hey, maybe he'll finally start commenting again, you know, because he's left us high and yes. dry for a year. I, I sent him a link to yeah, like an article that said, Oh yeah, it's coming on the 29th. Guess whose picture was on the on the front of the article? <laughs> Batman. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I didn't pick it. It just, you know. It just, it just happened. I mean, of course it's DC. Of course it's gonna be Batman, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh here. Maybe I'll message him. Maybe he'll get back to me before we're done. See if he got uh, see if it came out or not. 
I was gonna say it's it's day down there, so he should be up. <laughs> oh, I have been seriously eyeing uh, on Amazon. I think they're like half price now. The uh, Jeff Johns omnibuses mm. for Green Lantern and the Blackest Night tenth anniversary omnibus. So, if if you got some a lot of spare cash because even at half price they're expensive. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for you, but I'm waiting for your wife to put a hit out on me. Like, why did you have to start a Green Lantern podcast? <laughs> yeah, you should probably worry about that. <laughs> oh yeah, <I'm> sure. <laughs> that's what. That's like the one time, like you know, we were talking, you know, like me and Ray and everyone were talking about getting more Funkos because we're, you know, and I said, well, well the, excuse, uh, the excuse we'll use is, oh, well, you know, look how many. Funkas Lilith has Lilith is like, oh my god, all these wives are gonna be after me and stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to get the feeling that maybe Guy Gardner is in these issues, but because we're not getting to them. Oh yeah, I know. I, I keep, I'm like, I'm like, why? I mean, yeah, I'm like, these aren't bad. Why are we? You know? All right, so should we jump to these? We should probably jump into them. <laughs> yeah. All right, so kids, yes, the three issue. Kind of the the uh, prequel to a JLA, which we'll be getting to next week on for the crossover. Uh, Justice League: A Midsummer's Nightmare. Uh, number one was September nineteen ninety six. Uh, True Lies. Uh, writers: Fabian Nisa Nisa and Mark Wade. Uh, pencilers: Jeff Johnson and Derek Robertson. Inkers: John Holdredge and Annabelle Rodriguez. Colors, Pat Gary and letterer, Ken Lopez. Editor, Ruben Diaz. So I'm, assu so I'm assuming, I don't know, maybe it's just the website I'm looking at, but I don't know if they count this as uh, issues of the Justice League because it says previous issue, Justice League of America 113. <laughs> or Justice League of America 113. Next issue, JLA. <laughs> <laughs> well, number two, it's next yeah, issue. Yeah, number two. Number two. I'll, well, three, I'll see if it says JLA. All right. So, in New York City, a mage known as Destiny is wondering how pages came missing from a sacred tome that tells of Earth's future. This is Cal Rayner's doing, for he is writing and drawing about, in a, about this event for the latest issue of a, a Justice League. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, Hold on. This is Kyle Rayner. He's writing and drawing about this event for the latest issue of a comic book called Green Lantern. Huh? I would buy that. I think. Green I Lantern? think so. <laughs> uh, so, see, kids, we start with Kyle. All right. Despite pressures from his editor, Cal cannot seem to keep up with an ending for his story. <laughs> Will's like you and me both, brother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he and his neighbor Lee discuss this as they walk to Radu's coffee shop. Radu gives them their orders as they all discuss the spark that has gotten 79,000 people in America so far. The spark has been giving normal humans superpowers, something that Cal wishes for when Lee flies away to work with others that have taken to the air. Man, that'd be nice to be able to fly to work. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, if I could fly to work, I wouldn't be mad about not being able to work from home. Exactly. <laughs> In Metropolis, Daily Planet editor Perry White wants better articles about the worldwide genetic sparks from reporter Clark Kent. Kent feels compelled to do the stories, but once he started writing them, they don't feel real to him. He is clearly not himself. He even reacts strangely to a green pet rock that <laughs> will serve as a paperweight for Perry. <laughs> Get that away from me! What's wrong? I don't know. I don't know. And it wasn't at... Uh... It came from a toy store, Mr. McGitzelplex Toy Store. Yes. Like <laughs> uh, Clark ponders his unusual behavior as he reads and hears famous names that are somehow familiar to him. He thinks it's because he's a reporter, but in the back of his mind, he can't help but believe that something that it is something else. All right. Here we go, Ray. I know you're waiting for this. In Gotham City, <laughs> Bruce Wayne is in the corridors of Wayne Enterprises discussing the news with Lucius Fox. Lucius is talking about the sparks going on worldwide, but the only thing on Bruce's mind is making sure a boy named Jason Todd, whose parents were murdered, is cared for financially. Both Lucius and Wayne's butler, Alfred Pennyworth, think that the young billionaire doesn't need to be Gotham's guardian angel, but Bruce somehow feels otherwise. 
So I guess he just keeps setting up trust funds for people, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Uh, in Blue Valley, fire surrounds the contents of what seems to be a storage area. There is also a hull breach. A streak of red in a humanoid form is running at great velocities. However, the being may not make it in time to help the others inside. The stress on the ship was too great. Wally West has awakened from this terrible nightmare. He has overslept and risks being late for school. In Gateway City, at the Themyscira School for Girls, school headmistress uh, school headmistress Diana Prince is overseeing the outdoor physical education period on a normal sunny day. She is ref she is refereeing a tug of war game when a girl named Teresa pulls the cord the cord so hard that other students and Miss Prince herself are knocked to the ground. Teresa's right arm has grown in size and become a purple color. The teenager is clearly frightened by her new abilities. In a panic, she smashes a tree. Diana deflects the wood shards with her bracelets to protect the other students. Grabbing the nearby rope, she then lassos Teresa in an attempt to calm her. The chaotic events leave everyone to wonder one thing. How did Diana Prince do the things she had done? Uh, oh, God. In New Carthage, after Fisherman and Fleetman, Arthur Curry lost his left hand in a factory accident. The Red Tide Tuna Company made him a member of the board of directors in order to prevent him from filing a lawsuit. <laughs> Currently, as protesters picket over Red Tide's treatment of the seas and public relations at an all-time low, Arthur cannot help but feel he's a fish out of water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, there we go. Uh, uh, he's fish and heads for his next meeting. All right. Elsewhere, a Martian child is running to tell her mother what she had learned during the knowledge ceremony. Her teacher, Lenar, believes that there are many that there may be intelligent life on other worlds. John Jones, the girl's father, would have to see this to believe it. Plus, he doesn't even care if other planets have have uh, are inhabited as long as none of these beings do not interfere with the life he has with his wife and daughter. Oh boy. Somewhere, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere deep underground, a mysterious man has walked past some security guards unnoticed. He phases through a closed door. On the other side, there is a man whom he calls Doctor. The Doctor is attached to the machinery. The enigmatic man proceeds to tell him that metahumans are popping up by the thousands all over the world. The scene then shifts to a comic book page being drawn by Cal Rayner. Which one comic panel greatly resembles to the doctor wait uh greatly resembles to the doctor from the previous scene as he ponders story ideas cow is wondering how he will ever com compete with the creative teams on the flash and wonder woman <laughs> <laughs> uh uh meanwhile school team that kind of reminds me like back in the day like was that like the mid 80s like they had steve rogers drawing the captain america comic book yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think they try to stick him on Iron Man. He's like, no, I wanted to. Can I draw I Captain to, America? I, yeah. I'm really good at Captain America. <laughs> I think I can bring some insight to Captain America. <laughs> That'd be so funny. It'd be like, you know, the, if he did that, you know, in modern, you know, today, it'd be like people would be on the internet saying, this guy don't know Captain America. How did you <laughs> <like> Captain America? <laughs> uh, meanwhile, school teacher Wally West has just caught one of his students reading a Green Lantern comic book. This triggers a memory of a piece of the nightmare that he had had earlier. In Metropolis, metahumans are making the nights bloody with turf wars. A Metropolis Special Crimes Unit helicopter gets caught in the crossfire. It careens into the rooftop globe of the Daily Planet. This causes Clark to recall the destruction of the planet Krypton. His mind is now clear. He knows that he is Superman and he intends to clean up the streets of his city. He starts by saving a couple from being crushed by debris. Because metahumans seem to be the norm, he does so in his civilian clothing. News of the violence in Metropolis has re reached Gotham City, of course. In addition to this, Bruce Wayne is surprised to see his parents. They debate about Bruce staying with the Wayne Foundation charity. As Martha Wayne begins to move a Wayne gargoyle statue, her pearl necklace gets stuck. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I saw it, that. That's like the okay. ground. <laughs> Pieces of it fall to, onto the floor, forcing Bruce to relive the nightmare of his parents' death at the hands of a gunman when he was just a boy. 
Batman, the Dark Knight of Gotham, now knows the truth about himself. And a young Australian boy breathes a sigh of relief. <laughs> My favorite character. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. Oh, yeah. Okay. One spoiler for the Batman, Will. Like Lilith and I said, three hours. You don't hear you don't see one pearl hit the ground, so. Nice. <laughs> uh a group of metahumans is trying to break into Wayne Manor. Meanwhile, Bruce is searching for the entrance to the Bat Cave. He feels that something is missing. Superman arrives at Wayne Manor and assists Bruce, now as Batman, in dispatching the metahuman invaders. But their work is not done. If they are to save the world from the Sparkers' riots, they will need to find Wonder Woman, The Flash, Martian Manhunter, Green Lantern, and Aquaman. <sighs> All right, well, what did you think? Um... Oh, okay. Here's here's some of the characters that were mentioned, you know, at the Daily Planet. Nathaniel Adam, <laughs> Captain, Captain Adam, Adam. Mm -hmm. Michael Carter. Uh huh. Uh Beatrice DeCosta. That'd be fire, yeah. Yes. Barbara Gordon. Of course. Ted Cord. Yeah, Ted Cord. Blue Beetle. And of course the Guardian of the Universe was in the comic book. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Rex Mason and Oliver Queen. Uh-huh. So Alan Metamorpho Scott. and Green Arrow. Yep. Alan Scott, of course. Of course. Uh, oh, of course, Joe Chill was met is flashback <laughs> only. <laughs> uh let's see, let me see. Oh Parker, uh, they, 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 he goes, get, get me Parker. Wrong paper. I know, I like that. <laughs> Okay. Oh yeah, kids. You can find this any. Uh, uh, this issue is reprinted in the Justice League and Midsummer's Nightmare trade paperback and Justice League and Midsummer Night Midsummer's Nightmare the deluxe edition. Oh, I didn't know they did a deluxe edition. I know, me neither. Uh, Swan Plaza is named after Kurt Swan. Cool. Because of course, Mark Wade. Yeah. He knows his. He knows his stuff. He knows his Silver Age DC. Uh, Fun with fact: I believe hmm. that only one person ever defeated him at dc trivia and i think that that it, was mark grunwald <laughs> yes i believe so yeah yeah buddy oh yeah i think they said those two are those two are like you know the trivia masters you know mm -hmm. when it came to comics no one could defeat them it's so funny because like i you know i've talked to mark wade a few times i think the last time uh, Lilith and i talked to him I forget, we were asking him something about, I think it was about Flash or something, and he was like, he was trying to, me struggling to remember, he he goes, he goes, gotta understand, he's like, I can remember everyone else's stuff way better than I remember my own stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, speaking of Spider-Man, with great power comes great opportunity is a take <laughs> on Spider-Man's motto, with great power comes great responsibility. All right, uh, so thought any thought thoughts on this? I thought the art was really good. I mean, it's uh, yeah. I feel like they start out with Kyle, but he kind of gets lost in the rest of the issues. I mean, he's he snipes with Wally, you know. Yeah. And it's really it's really the big three: Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. Yeah. Get them can I get the most screen time? If we're talking about the entirety, this issue, of course, it's Superman Batman. Okay. I miss it. Ray got back to me. Oh, okay. I asked him if they have DC Universe. He goes, first he goes, Nada. Then he goes, We'll check again. Then he goes, Holy bleep, it's here. <laughs> Not game, game changer. I'm gonna be diving into more DC now. I guess he said he's gonna do a trial in a few days because he said he's busy right now. But again, yeah, a few days he's gonna start the trial and see it. See Sweet. how it goes. Yeah. Next week, Ray. Next week. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Tell him. JLA. Be like, we're gonna be doing a crossover, man. You said feedback. You could do feedback for two shows. Yeah. <laughs> uh cool. All right. Yeah, so yeah, this this I thought this was a good issue. The art was good. I mean, oh, Jeff yeah. Johnson's an awesome artist. Derek Roberts is an awesome artist. Uh, you know. Nisiiza and Wade are excellent writers. So yeah, and I mean, this might be the greatest cover on the issue one. I mean, we got Cal front and center, and then yeah. look who Ooh. we got behind. Look who we got behind them, Batman, exactly. my favorite character. 
All right, should we get the two? Let's do it. All right. Uh, stupid website. All right. Uh, Justice League in Midsummer's Nightmare number two, October 1996, to no avail. Uh, I believe same creative team all around. John Jones and his wife examine the heavens while their daughter does some drawings on a rock wall somewhere on Mars. John teases her, and in the process of discussing life on other worlds, he loses lenses that he needs. As he picks it up, he sees the design that his child had created. They are symbols that seem strangely familiar to him. <laughs> you know, something that looks strangely like a hope symbol that looks strangely like an S, a, uh, a, a bat, bat symbol, <laughs> a lightning <laughs> bolt, yes. Uh, you know, I, a question for you. Hmm. There's you know the classic GL logo. There's Kyle's logo. Then there's the kind of the little modified that they did for Rebirth. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite? Um, I liked Kyle's for the longest time, but I think I think it's a nice blending of the two. Like the one we have on the screen here. Like is uh -huh. that like the Rebirth or that, is that's that Rebirth? kind of the Rebirth one? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's my favorite too. I mean, the the classic has got its place but uh i think they they you know adding those kind of edges to it it just looks cool especially with what they were doing with the yeah you know costumes you know with the the symbol being you know a light projection above yeah, it too really, which i yeah. thought was really cool yeah they modern it up yeah. yeah uh superman and batman are searching for their comrades batman has made an appointment to meet arthur curry as bruce wayne Boy, some movie, what movie's still that? While Superman will talk to Diana Prince as Clark Kent. Both are unaware that Dr. Destiny has been responsible for the sparks all over the world. He's a he is attached to a device that seems to make dreams into reality by amplifying his telepathic abilities. Meanwhile, Wally West, convinced that his recent nightmares are somehow connected to the Green Lantern comic book, has taken a flight to New York City to speak with the writer-artist Cal Rayner. All of these people, including Dr. Destiny, are pawns in the mysterious No Man, K N O W. <laughs> what isn't realized yet is that everyone involved is going to be part of a great adventure. Okay, here's the best part of this issue Arthur Curry believes Bruce Wayne is insane. He clearly doesn't believe Wayne's claim that Curry is the king of Atlantis. In response to Arthur's skepticism, Bruce pushes Arthur's <laughs> face into a fish tank. <laughs> That really was the best part of this <laughs> issue. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> uh, being submerged in the water makes him remember his life as Aquaman. Now all he has to do is meet Superman and Batman at the Empire State Building tonight at 9 p.m. Only there can he learn the truth about what has happened to the world. Can you imagine if he pushed his head into that aquarium and some like goldfish or something's like, well, yeah, wake up, stupid. <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Mark. <laughs> uh, as oh Lord, that's the name as no man recruits the superpowered woman called Anoxie, Cal Rayner meets Wally West, whom Cal mistakenly thinks is a stalker. <laughs> Wally has had dreams that feature characters exactly like those on the paper on Cal's art table, and West wants to know how he and Rayner are connected. Cal clearly doesn't know the answers to Wally's questions. Both men are becoming agitated. Suddenly, a bolt of green light is fired from Cal's uh, right fist. Wally moves at very high speed to avoid being hit by the energy blast. So I like how, like, you know, Batman and Superman had to wake up like Wonder Woman and Aquaman, but these two kind of woke themselves up. Yeah, that was kind of cool. And they did it because they were annoying each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm guessing, I don't know, the weird whatever dream state or whatever it is. So I, I'm guessing Cal didn't realize the ring was on his finger, maybe. I guess, yeah. And I was curious to this, you know, the ship's about to blow up or whatever. You know, there's been a, whatever, uh, you know, did, that never really comes back. It doesn't seem to have much relevance to the story. It's just something bad that he's dreaming about, you know. Yeah. Is that like a submerged memory or something from like the satellite or whatever? I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think they were just kind of trying to come up with a, yeah, it's like he, he was kind of, his memories as the Flash were kind of trying to pop through. 
Uh, sparker violence is increasing all over the world. No man is enjoying every minute of the chaos. Clark Kent has found Diana Prince, who mistakes his need to reveal the truth to her as a pickup line. She has become confused after she crushes a statue with her bare hands. Superman reassures her as she and he both float off a ledge of the Themyscira School for Girls. Diana finally remembers herself as Wonder Woman. Superman, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Aquaman meet at the Empire State Building as scheduled. They know that Dr. Destiny has altered reality with his telepathic dream powers. John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, is the only one who can undo what Destiny has done. Unfortunately, nobody has had any luck in finding him. Suddenly, a metahuman turf war breaks out. Despite Batman's protest, the heroes take on the Sparkers. They are outnumbered and outgunned until Green Lantern and the Flash arrive. The riot has been stopped and John must be found, in which Superman has an idea where he is. John Jones has been living a lie. Instead of being on Mars, he has been trapped in an illusion created by Dr. Destiny and No Man. The dream is interrupted by Superman, who, along with the other heroes, is trying to tell John the truth. He has been kept in a U.S. Air Force base's hangar located in Roswell, New Mexico. <laughs> uh, so let me guess, is the, is the address uh, start with a 51? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Probably. Uh, John doesn't want to believe, but he is eventually angered by the deception. However, before he can act on his rage, No Man's seven recruits, including Anoxy, Vigil, Behemoth, and Unity, confront the recently awakened Martian and his friends. The compound is then engulfed in flames, and John is forced to watch his family die once again. Now, Poor John. In... What? Poor I know. <laughs> oh, you don't all. You don't want to pit. You don't want to piss this guy off. No basically superman level and he can get in your head and he can change his shape so yeah <laughs> uh now interesting yeah the martian manhunter tends to join superman batman wonder woman the flash green lantern and aquaman then and only then can they show dr destiny no man and the rest of the world the true power of the justice league all right what did you think a uh, pretty good middle issue i mean you know there's uh, we still don't have a lot of, you know, answers by this point. Um, mm -hmm. The art's still great, and the uh, the story's you know moving along. But again, I feel like um, you know, there's not a lot of Aquaman, there's not a lot of Flash, and there's not a lot of Green Lantern. They just yeah, kinda there. And this is this is the the Trinity, right? You know, it's Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. And really, it feels more Superman, Batman than anything else. Yeah. And again, I mean, I think that's the hook. You know, they're yeah. trying to hook you. Yeah. Uh, oh, we do get a uh, quick uh, appearances of Billy Batson and Tim Drake. Yeah. <laughs> How funny would that have been if Shazam would have been able to woken up, you know, just out of nowhere for some reason, someone had gotten Billy Batson to say Shazam. Yeah. And then boom. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly, what have I been doing? <laughs> what the heck's um, going on here? I know. Uh, but I do like, was, was it Superman's like, you know, if we need more help, why don't we go find like Nightwing or Supergirl or, you know. Yeah. Well, you know. No, it, a book to sell. It's got to be Justice League. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I was looking for any other notes. No, that's about it. So. Any other thoughts, or should we get to the last one? Um, yeah, let's get to the last one. I think that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good issue, but yeah, let's right. move on to number three. Let's wrap it up. All right, Justice League, A Midsummer's Nightmare, number three, November 1996. Oh, God. Days, D-A-Z-E, and nights, K-N-I-G-H. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Days and nights. No, that's you, Mark Wade. Uh, <laughs> hey, there's there's always time for a good pun. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Hey, if, if we have any motto here, that's it. Uh, that's totally it. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I wish we would have ever had a chance to talk to Grunewald. He would have appreciated that. Yeah, I think so, too. That oh, you let me. Oh, you know what? Okay, it's late, kids, but okay. All every issue include uh, yeah every issue this week including this one by friend of the show Mark Wade. Hi, this is Mark Wade, and you're listening to the Capes and the Lunatics. There Podcast. we go. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if Fabian, but yes, Mark Wade. All right. Uh, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, and Aquaman are battling no man's sparkers. However, time is precious. Dr. Destiny must be found before it's too late. John Jones ends the conflict quickly by knocking the sparkers out with a telepathic assault. J Jones has been changed drastically since he learned of Dr. Destiny's deception as he normally would not do this. The mental attack on No Man's group took a lot out of him. He rests a few minutes be before revealing his theories. Apparently, Dr. Destiny had been calling for help by placing the seeds of truth into the minds of the seven heroes. Green Lantern knows where the dream manipulator is because he had been drawing Destiny in his comics. He had intended to place the machines to which the villain was attached in a military research complex outside of Butte, Montana. <laughs> See, I was good. It's spelled B-U-T-T-E. I didn't yeah. make the joke. Okay. But. You ah, how dare you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. All that remains is for the team to get inside before no man's plans succeed. Thanks to, thanks to Batman's stealth prowess. Superman's like, I can't even see him. Yeah. <laughs> the Justice League are, are able to enter the government complex without any problems. The Seven, however, are subject to a series of illusions before the Flash finds the door that leads to Dr. Destiny. The Dream match Master is attached to No Man's devices while pleading for help. No Man... I keep wanting to say Kano Man. Kano Man. <laughs> I promised Destiny a world of his own making if he used his powers to assist him in his plan. Destiny had wanted to make the Justice League feel as helpless as its members had made him feel in the past. What Destiny didn't realize was that everything that he believed was his actually belonged to no Kano Man. <laughs> Dr. Destiny had given what was left of his soul to no man in order to get revenge on his foes. No man then makes himself known to the Justice League. The omnipotent being knocks Superman into space and tells the rest of the heroes that he intends to save the world rather than conquer it. He was granted his abilities when an alien ship landed on his world. The controller, as no man called the craft's pilot, had given a being that seemed as prehistoric that seemed a prehistoric human male his power, and thus no man was born. So it was literally a controller, right? Uh, kind of that's what, that's what uh, it looked a prehistoric like. man who was given kind of the knowledge and some power of a controller, I think. Yeah, well, but the, in that flashback, wasn't it a controller who did it yes. to him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, seeing the vast information in the controller's vessel had made him curious. It was here that he saw humanity's fate. And didn't he also throw out a line? It's like, oh yeah, they did, so, you know, they did something to some other guy too, but he was a little more uh, savage. Savage, yeah. I was thinking that, that was Vandal Savage, yeah. Yeah, I, I assume it was. I, I believe because as you're reading this, I'm like, isn't this Vandal Savage's origin? That he was yeah. like, oh yeah, there's another guy Savage. I'm like, oh, okay, I forgot about that part. Yeah. No man planned to save Earth from a threat of incredible power. Using Doctor Destiny, no man had given the JLA the normal life they had always wanted while at the same time making ordinary humans superpowered beings. No man needs these new metahumans to defeat the coming menace. However, what started out as a plan to aid Earth has turned to utter chaos. Even the Justice League might not be able to clean up no man's mess. But, have no fear, Batman has a plan that requires the distraught Martian Manhunter to telepathically awaken the entire world from no man and Dr. Destiny's dream. Aquaman will use his latent emp empath empathic power to keep John from going too deeply into humanity's collective consciousness. Everything seems to go well until the strain is too much for Aquaman. As the rest of the JLA, including Superman, battles No Man, a weakened Dr. Destiny assists the Martian Manhunter in doing what Aquaman could not. In doing so, Dr. Destiny sacrifices himself to help mankind revive from the nightmares that he had caused. No Man's scheme has failed. Seeing that his plot was not a success, no man leaves the task of protecting the human race from the foreseen menace to the Justice League. Only when hope he only hopes that they are up to such a great task. With no man now gone, Superman says that the powerful ex extraterrestrial has taught the team a lesson. 
Some threats are just too big for only one hero, and the Justice League must reform in order to take on such things. See Let's next see. Week. To battle foes that no one hero can withstand. That sounds very avenger to me, man. I was going to say, yes, there came a, there came a time <laughs> when a menace, <clears throat> Loki. <laughs> I mean, does it seem kind of like that, too? Because it's like, you know, the Avengers originally formed because of Loki, and now they're the Justice League's reforming because of Dr. Destiny. And a Nobia. little bit. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I was very curious about uh, No Man's Warning. You know, the yeah. ultimate Warbringer is coming. And I was like, okay, I got to look this up. So I looked it up. <laughs> I didn't know this off the top of my head. But apparently, when Mageddon comes, oh. which is the end of Grant Morrison's run on JLA, I think, uh, Batman remembers No Man saying that you know, he was going to make all of the people of Earth superheroes, basically. So that's their, that became yeah. their strategy. And that's what defeats Mageddon, I think. Right. So, so did Grant Morrison let them know that, or, or, or did know. they write this story and then Grant Morrison's like, oh hey, guess, oh yeah, they did write that story. Hey, that's kind of. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> um, but I don't think we ever see No Man again. Yeah, I was looking at. I, I clicked on his name. I was looking. Yeah, yeah, because all it says is that like the stuff from this ish, these issues, and then yeah, it's like, like you said, in the, at the end of Grant Morrison's run, they, you know, during the whole Mageddon thing, you know, Batman mentions No Man, but. Oh, wait, he does show up in the JLA Secret Files and Origins, number one. Uh, which is probably just an entry, right? Maybe, yeah. They did short stories there, so I don't, yeah, I don't, probably just an entry. Uh, oh, okay, you ready? You ready for this? Yes, he hasn't appeared again. Well, he uh, <clears throat> went off to No Man's Land. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> <Suck it, Kona. laughs> is that the library sorry oh. <laughs> you know he, he's spending a year with Batman you know Batman no man's land no man's land <laughs> <laughs> nice so what did you think of this uh, three issue uh, bridge between Justice League and JLA. I thought it was good, especially since it wasn't by the team that was going to be writing JLA. So, you know, mm -hmm. I thought for, for them introducing someone else's book, it was pretty good. Yeah. Again, Mark Wade, good writer. Fabian's oh, yeah. good too. So, yeah. you know, it's not like they just gave, like you know, like an intern this job. Yeah, they brought in the some big guns for this. Yeah. The, the art, art was good. I like the art. Yeah. yeah. Art was very good. I don't know. I just, for a, one of the things that I loved about Wade's J his just his JLA run, yeah, right? uh, JLA Heaven's Ladder, awesome. Oh, yeah. Brian Hitch art mm -hmm. is, I think at that point he really got the hang of giving every member of the league kind of their chance to shine. I don't think we really kind of got that in this. You know, it was more Batman Superman. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, again, it's only it's three issues, so he really mm -hmm. didn't have time to stretch his legs. And two, I think the main mission for this story is just, hey, we have to come up with a reason why these seven come together. To get back together, yeah. Because I mean, we really haven't had them. This was the first time I think since Cry, you know, before Crisis, that the mm -hmm. you know the main seven. I mean, Cal taking in Green Lantern's place, you know, and Wally like, taking. Yeah, very place, but yeah, the main the main seven you know archetypes have been together. Yeah, I think you're right because even it was before the, Justice League Detroit. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Justice League Detroit was like the what late? Did it go 250 before it was canceled? Something like that. Oh, uh, oh, the the, uh, the Justice the, League of America. Yeah, it, I think no, it went past two. It might have been like two seven sixty. I think it might have been two sixty. Some I believe. Okay, because I know Justice League, the Detroit area was like in the, the 40s, 30s or 40s. Was that right? Yeah, I think it was around the, like the early 230s or something. Yeah, because yeah, cause after the Martian War, yeah, like, you know, a lot of the big hitters didn't show up. So, you know, Mako Man's like, I'm disbanding the league and we're going to rebuild it, you know, with people who can be here. Yeah, that was a bit, that was one of our topics of conversation when, uh, 
Lilf and I talked to the uh, the man who was writing that, uh, Jerry Conway. I this guess. is Jerry oh, Conway, yeah. and you're listening to yeah. the Capes and Lunatics nice. podcast. And I was like, I was like, is it is it a lot easy? I'm like, I'm probably, I think I know the answer to this, but is it a lot easier when you can like build a Justice League where like every character doesn't have their own monthly books, so you have to work around things? Like, oh yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> you know, you don't have to worry about Superman's doing, Batman's doing, Wonder Woman's doing in their books. Looks like it went 261 issues. Oh, yeah. Canceled nice. in 87. And I believe the last couple were written by J.M.D. Mateus, and then he took over the rebooted, you know, when they rebooted. Uh, oh, it was a Legends crossover uh, for number 260. Yeah. And... Written by, yep, J.M. DeMatteis. Yeah, because mm-hmm. yeah, I forget how many he did the last couple after Conway, I believe. But yeah, and then we get the Bwahaha League. So. Yeah, then he rolled over <laughs> to. Oh yeah, kid. Oh yeah, hey, send me your questions. We're gonna be talking to J.M. DeMatteis about all things Justice League here on a Saturday. So, Spectre, excuse me. <laughs> You're welcome, Will. I mean, you know he. he we're talking to him around your breakfast time, noon, noon on Saturday. So yeah, that's about right. Yeah, I may have to see what uh, see if I can make that. <laughs> yeah, just let, if you want in, just let me know. And send your thoughts, kid. Send your questions, kids. You know, I need to. I need to. Go I mean, this is. I, I need to read this. that. I need to read that series. It's yeah. been so long. <laughs> this is like the third or fourth time I've talked to him, just because every time I talk to him, I'm like. I want to talk about this. You know, I talked to him like about Spider-Man at least twice. And I'm like, man, I want to talk to you about Justice League. I talked to him about his Captain America one time. I'm like, I'm going to talk, you know, we've got to talk to your Justice League at some point. <laughs> Every time I, mean, I talk, was... the man has a body of work. Every time yeah. I talk to him, I'm like, oh yeah, you wrote that too. I want to talk that. Too. Well, you know, you know, the Justice League International, that era, I mean, it kind of defines the era, you know, from, oh, yeah. from post-crisis to, you know, almost the 90s um, you know, oh yeah i mean i mean he did what the i think he did the first like 60 issues i, I think of that mm-hmm. that justice league era yeah yeah that's pretty awesome i mean when you think of the team of blue beetle and booster gold he was the one who put those two together yeah which love that team <laughs> one one punch that's him that's the yeah, one punch. Poor Guy Gardner. Of course, this was Guy Gardner, the insufferable Guy Gardner. <laughs> yeah. I you mean, he may, again, he he made you know he made he they gave him some lemons because I think it's where did I read it? Oh, I have a trade of like the first couple issues. I think it's in the introduction. It's like you know right after Crisis, you know they reboot Superman and Wonder Woman. So like yeah, you can't have Superman, you can't have Wonder Woman. They took pity on him. They gave him Batman. You know. I think, I, think, I think the only lantern he could have was Guy. So yeah. Well, but then eventually Gnort comes along, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if like, when they came up with him in the in Green Lantern book, he's like, "Oh, can I have it? Can I play with can that? I, can I have it? Yeah. Justice League Antarctica wasn't that where Gnort was? I, I think, yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean he's incredible with like these characters. A lot of people were just like, you know, who. But yeah, I mean, didn't he write Craven's Last Hunt? Yes. Yes. I think that's the very first time I talked to him. I'm like, we ought to talk Craven's Last Hunt. I mean, that's a, that's a Spidey classic right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, he wrote Captain America, Captain mm-hmm. America run. Uh, that's what I said. I think he's another one. I think he's written mo- a lot of like mar- most Marvel and DC characters in some shape or form. Mm hmm. I mean, he he's. I think I think he's. I mean, I'll talk to him Saturday, but I think he's written like he wrote some actual episodes of the Justice League animated series. Oh yeah, I think you're right. Very yeah, so. cool. Oh yeah, I, I I've been wanting this one for a while because I know I think it's the last time we talked. He's like he's like I love Justice League since I was a kid. He's like if I could go back in time and tell my you know younger self that I was I'd be writing all this Justice League one day. <laughs> so I'd, never, I'd never believe it. I'd just like have a heart attack. <laughs> nice very cool yes all right so what do we got coming up man well kids i don't even have to look (laughs) at the schedule next week don't come before you come here next week come the day before for unlimited justice i believe was that episode 15 where we'll we'll start the crossover uh the first four issues of jla we'll do 
issues one and two there, and then come back here the next day for Justice League or JLA uh, issues three and four. So both episodes will be me, Will, and Lilith. So nice. That is yeah, uh, and Tone is welcome if, he, if we get yeah. ever drag him out of far sector. So I mean, in, uh, those four issues of JLA were kind of. I mean, they were earth shattering back then. You oh know, they, yeah, they were a big deal. You know, Grant Morrison doing the JLA. This was, you know, post Animal Man. Um, and again, that's probably that's I th again. I think that's the first time we had the Big Seven since probably at least the er what early eighties. Yeah, I think so. It'd probably been over like fifteen years since the the main seven had been in the Justice League book together. Yeah, absolutely. At the well, same time. not counting JLA, a Midsummer's Nightmare. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm, maybe we should talk about that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so next week is the crossover. And then in two weeks, speaking of Flash, we'll get the Green Lantern Flash Faster Friends 1 and 2. So Cool. Also with Jay Garrick and Alan Scott. Young and then Alan Scott and old Jay Garrick, right? <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> And then in three weeks, we'll be back to the main book. It's got Green Lantern 83 through 86. So Nice. Oh, Fatality, right? Yes. Very cool. So, see, kids, we told you it would get good once we cleared that the Sky Gardener and Dark Star issues. <laughs> now it's gold. It's gold, Jerry. All right. So, email us all your th all the thoughts. Like I said, if you, not on this show, but if you want to uh, have questions for JMD Mateus, uh, little hellfire uh email us capes and lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737 that's 614-38capes and remember you can follow sector 2814 on facebook on twitter uh find links to all the various social medias for all the shows we do including unlimited justice where next week you'll find part one of the uh, crossover uh Again, the YouTube channel, please subscribe there. Every uh, episode we do, no matter what, it's an interview or not, everything gets a uh, video. So, as we say, smash that uh, subscribe button. Smash it! Uh, and also, again, most importantly, if you can, please subscribe to our Patreon. Uh, we're all paying for this out of our own pocket. Uh, now, no Guardians to back us up, so... Yes, uh, every little bit helps, but 3 to $5 gets you early access to creator interviews. Uh, every month, Wilf and I talk to the man himself, Mr. DG Chichester, about one of his stories. I got the good mic out for you guys. And superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time. March episode is up. Find out who won between Elektra and Blade Trinity. You're doing, <laughs> you're doing some... You're doing some rough work, man. I salute Every you. Every week, I get <laughs> like clockwork. I mention it. You just shake your head. Like, oh. You're like, how can you put yourself through that? <laughs> All right, kids. So, yes. Uh, so, if you can, subscribe to the Patreon or pick yourself up some Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch. Everything I mentioned is at linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And hopefully... Soon we'll have the return of Matt Kona, but until then, follow him everywhere on every social media known to man at Matt Kona, M-A-T-T-K-O-N-A. -T -T -A. Get to know the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, <laughs> uh, for what? He gives me his bone. <laughs> See you later, bunkies. All right, well, all read. Master of the core, master of the quantum zone, master of the Kickstarter, crossover division. <laughs> Where can people find you? Hey, you can find me lots of places. Uh, at Walred, uh, that's at W-A-L-L-R-E-D. That's Gmail and Facebook and Twitter. I spend G most of my time on Twitter, probably on some other social media that I've since forgotten or ignore. I don't know, remember which, but whatever. Um, if you're interested in uh, Crossover Division, it's a uh, sci-fi book that we do via Kickstarter. The third issue should be going to the printer hopefully next week. And... We're launching the fourth issue, hopefully sometime in May, after we finish fulfillment on number three. Uh, also, we've got Diary of Night, which is right behind Phil right now. Ha! Huh. Uh, yes! Uh, <laughs> diaryofnight.com. You can find Crossword Division at crossworddivision.com. 
And uh, I also do a show uh, every week with uh, Kevin jo writer Kevin Joseph, where uh, as Kickstarter creators ourselves, we uh, find uh, creators with uh, Kickstarters that are running and uh, see what we can do to help you know promote their work. And uh, it's uh, pretty fun. It's called Explain Yourself. And finally, you love Green Lantern. That must mean you love Quasar, too, because Quasar is awesome. So if you want to find out more about Quasar, you can always go to the Quantum Zone at quantumzone.org. I am God. <laughs> uh, I hope it's going somewhere nice. <laughs> Seems like I'm getting a package every other day. <laughs> and of course, kids, most importantly. I, of course, love how Jordan. Of course. <laughs> All right, kids. Thank you for joining us. Again, next week, part one of the crossover. Catch it on Thursday on Unlimited Justice, episode 15, and then back here in one week for part two. We do of Sector 2814, episode number 62. That's right. <laughs> so JLA 1 and 2 on part one, and then, yes, back here in one week, episode 62, we'll cover JLA 3 and 4. Woo. Wonder who, the, wonder who the, wonder who the big hero is is going to rescue everyone. I don't know. Ray, any thoughts? It's Batman, my favorite character. Batman, I think it's Batman. All right, kids, <laughs> come back next time, and remember, wake up. <laughs>